XCPNG migrating from other hypervisors. So you can migrate from VMware, Microsoft Hyper-V, KVM into XCPNG. And I referenced this because we're going to use some of the same commands in here, but we're doing actually a P to V, as in physical to virtual. And this comes up because, well, we like to consolidate old hardware or sometimes uh, when clients have you know machines that they really need and the hardware may be getting aging and we got to bring that Windows install over to a nice, good hypervisor system where we can manage it and keep an eye on it and uh, make snapshots of it and then maintain it for whatever special purpose it may have. But this does work with not just older systems, this works with new systems as well. And for our demo here, we're actually going to use a Windows 10 physical box. And we're going to use disk to VHD. This is a free utility by Mark Rusinovich over a uh, writer of Cistern Internals. And this is uh, download disk to VHD. So what this does is really simple utility that's going to convert the drive on a physical machine to a VHD. And I've already started the process. So it's really simple. This is screen connect slash ConnectWise Control, it is the utility by which we use to manage computers remotely. Uh, remotely for this particular computer is over on our workbench here at the office. So I connected to it, I'm in here recording, and I'm kicking off this a backup, essentially creating an image. Now, it's pretty straightforward. It selects the drives, and by default, it wants to select all the drives. This is an external USB 3 NVMe drive. I chose this one because, well, it's fast and you have to give it a place to land that isn't the drive that you're actually copying. So uh, these are part of the recovery partitions and boot partitions for Windows 10. This is the C drive uh, for Windows 10. And we copied it over to D drive, which is that USB drive, desktopdemo.vhd. Now, the only thing I had to do was uncheck this little box that says, use VHDX because VHDX is not compatible with XCPNG. So we want to make sure we're exporting these as a VHD file. And the other nice thing about this is you don't even have to shut down the system to do this. It's uh, grabbing a volume shadow copy to create this file. Uh, once you've created it, awesome. And then you can work on the file separately. It doesn't require me shutting this machine down. Matter of fact, I just move this over the way and now we can start working on the process to get this file moved over. Now, the reason I'm referencing the Microsoft Hyper-V section of this is because there's a couple things we need to do. Now, because it's already in VHD format, there's not any more conversion. Uh, this VHD file can be copied over to XCPNG. Now, the way they said to do this is create a NFS share on that server. Mount the NFS share as a storage repository in Zen. Um, and these are perfectly good instructions, but we can also bypass them for this particular setup. And what we have here is I have XCPNG with the local storage being EXT. Now, EXT versus LVM storage, you can do some reading and uh, search on that uh, with XCPNG, um, but logical volume management is block storage, EXT, stores them as files that are completely available on the computer. It would be a lot more extensive and beyond my uh, comprehension, well, beyond the scope of this video, not really comprehension, uh, for me to explain how to import them into LVM. It's just easier to do it through EXT. Now, you can always move them from EXT over to an LVM volume uh, without any conversion within Zen Orchestra itself. But for sake of this, uh, this particular system happens to be EXT, so that makes this easy. Now let's look, right here is the UUID of the local storage. So go over here and we're gonna go and LS, oh, actually I'm sorry, uh, DF-H and we're gonna see run SR mount and that same UUID that we had here. So 136 uh, ending in 87C, ending in 87C. So we wanna copy the files there. So if we go to CD slash run SR, oops, mount, it's a A5. And we see we have a couple files in here already. So great, we have them. Now what? Well, we got to get this one over here. This is my local computer. And there I have the one terabyte USB NVMe and desktop demo VHD. Now, one of the instructions is if you notice, disks inside of here have to have a UUID themselves. So if we look at it, there's the UUID for that. So how do we create it? Well, we'll go over here, UUID gen dash R. So we can go here and this is just utility to generate a UUID. So we're going to do that. Hey, look, we have a UUID. So I'm just going to copy this. Whoops, got to get all of it. Copy and we're going to rename desktop 
to this.phd. So now it's in a naming scheme compatible with Zen server. And it's just a rename. So now that's that file name. So no big deal. We just change it so we understand what it is. Now we can go from here and I'm going to use SCP, but if you were in Windows, you could be doing these same steps with like a Win SCP to copy things over or um, learn how to load the bash shell inside of Windows is another way that this would work. So we're going to SCP and uh, we're going to take this file here, the C6, and we're going to go root at 172.16. 69.215, that's the IP address of the XCPNG server, which we're logged into up here, colon slash, and we want to drop that file into here. Come on. Whoops, uh, copy, paste, and one too many slashes. That stuff matters. Can't have too many. So now we're just gonna take this file, and copy it to this directory here. And uh, I'll speed this up because it's take about uh, four minutes and 50 seconds. It'll get this file copied over. All right, so the file has been copied over and it's here and all set. So we now should see it inside of the Zen server, right? This, not there. Well, easy enough to hit rescan this. There we go. So this is our Windows 10 demo. Now the metadata around the disk name isn't there. That's what we're gonna name it now. So Windows 10 demo. Did I spell Windows wrong? Probably, D-O-W-S. So there's our Windows 10 demo disk. We'll give it a description too. Demo drive, there we go. And as you can see, it's not attached to anything. It's just kind of hanging out here. So we have to get the VM set up. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new VM. Select the pool. This is Windows 10 64 bit, but you can choose whatever one you're importing. It's 10 uh, YouTube. There we go. We'll give it uh, four CPUs, eight gigs of RAM. Tell it to boot PXE, ETH0 is fine. Local storage, yeah, that's fine. They don't have an option. This is one of the things that I'm gonna cover here real quick and why I'm doing it this way. There's not an easy option just to go ahead and automatically attach a VM. Also, please note of what the system was when you created it and moved it. So this was a UEFI system, so we have to set this to UEFI. Click OK. It's just a notice we have to do. So boot VM after creation, I don't want. Um, I don't want it to auto power on. And we're just going to go ahead and hit create now. We don't want to power on because a couple little housekeeping things we need to do. First, boot order. I don't care about network boot or DVD boot, so I'll hit save. Next, this drive, doesn't matter, it's not the right one. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the VDI. You'll destroy all the data, sure will, no problem. Then we're gonna go attach disk. And uh, we just gotta get the Windows 10 demo disk on here. Hit attach, Windows 10 demo drive. There's that system like we were talking about. Now we can go over to the console and boot. Now, like I said too, uh, we wanna make sure, this is, if you forgot to set some of those things like the UEFI that can be set inside of here, um, this is where you set some of the other things. We're also gonna go ahead and turn on the Windows Update Utilities. Um, people have asked me about how to get the drivers in a couple times, just do that, that's fine. So you can uh, get the Windows Update Utilities in, but there's instructions on that. Um, if you don't want the Windows Update Utility, you wanna load it. It is, uh, to my knowledge, 100% compatible, and I believe it's in our wiki with the Citrix tools if you wanna load those instead. So uh, whichever one you wanted to do. Now let's go back over here to console, and now we're gonna start it. It'll give us a error the first time we start. Or it might not. Okay, it didn't, great. I've seen it sometimes when we move these, it'll give an error so it doesn't see the drive right away. Uh, you just select the drive and uh, it, it'll boot. Also, Windows 10 is a little bit more forgiving than some of the other operating systems. And uh, there we go. We're setting up a QEMU USB tablet. It actually uses a tablet driver for one of those things, but it found the drivers. Let's go ahead and using Windows Update, load the drivers. I think it may ask me for a restart when it's done once, but we're done. That's it. That's all you have to do to get this in there. Hey, there we go. Device UME tablets uh, set up, ready to go. It's going to probably download a couple more drivers, but uh, you can see how quick that was uh, 
pretty pain free for getting this done. Of course, this is a, a pretty fast system. This particular server is going in uh, to a client. Hey, there's our restart. We're going to say no. We'll restart in a second. Uh, this is a uh, all flash array with an uh, E21 Thrix, uh, E2136 Xeon CPU. Um, and like I said, this all flash array means this thing is just really, really fast. But we'll go ahead and restart it just to show you that it restarts with all the drivers. So we're going to go ahead and restart the system. And we'll do this in real time. I'm not uh, going to time compress this. That way you can see just how fast it boots up on a good piece of hardware. Even Windows 10 after loading drivers. There's the boot. And it's booted. It's back up and running. Uh, the first thing you noticed uh, when it popped up, it said the session had been ended. Um, that was actually because I ended that Screen Connect session. So that's all I had to do there. So oh, one more restart, it looks like. So we'll go ahead and do the one more restart and say yes again. But I think you get the idea that this system is fast. It's efficient to do it this way. I'll leave links for the disk to VHD and the tools, but uh, you can copy to the NFS volume. You can copy it right to an EXT like I did there. An EXT volume, just get that file over there. Make sure it's named properly. Use the uname-r to give it a name. Rescan the disk. Attach the disk uh, to the VM that you want. And now you virtualized it. That's a uh, pretty straightforward process. Don't you, the, the hardest part about this is the waiting uh, over time to wait for the files to copy. That's the only part that uh, really takes a long time. And unfortunately, and this is going to be the nature of the, where this machine is going to be living. It doesn't have 10 gig connections. Uh, so we have to do these migrations on only gig connections, which is the same ones we just did them on here. So uh, it took, what, five minutes to copy over a Windows uh, basic with not too much data in it. I know it's going to be a little bit longer because there's some files on there, but uh, that's it. All right. And thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.